Hi, my name is William and today I'm going to be troubleshooting an electrical issue on this PC200 excavator. Uh, the customer has complained of electrical issues on the wiper motor, the radio and also the heater blower motor is not working. So uh, we're going to look at that and hopefully we can resolve the issues. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanic's guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode, and make sure that the seal on that plug-in, there it diffuses. Okay, you can see that's Komatsu quality, man. Holy smokes. Okay, so I put the fan on high, but it really doesn't display anything. One of the first things I'm going to do check the monitor for codes or inactive codes. This machine is fully electronic. It's gonna be able to uh, tell me if it's had any electrical issues before. So we're gonna start with that. So we gotta make sure that we always use three point contact when climbing on these machines. Very important in the industry. So two hands, one foot all the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the codes on this, see if there's any codes related to uh, these issues go to abnormality code it says mechanical systems but we're gonna go to the electrical systems and enter okay and it's showing that it, it's had uh, 10 error codes and number one right there is actually the uh, wiper motor short it says there's a short in the wiper motor let's see if our wiper works yeah, and they're working. Okay. So I'm activating the washer. I can hear the motor going, but I have a feeling it's empty. So, uh, yeah. So we'll stop the wipers. Uh, we're going to check the wiring as well to make sure that the connectors are properly sealed. Okay. And water hasn't gotten in, inside. And also, I'm just going to pull this cover off here. And we're going to have a look uh, at our motor to see, just make sure uh, all the connections are uh, connected and nothing is shorting out. What I've done so far is in order to get to the wiper motor, this is the wiper arm right here. But this wiper arm goes right through. And what I was looking for is to see if this link here, this one, has rubbed through any wires or harness or anything like that. First of all, remove this part of the air ducting. Okay, I had to remove that cover, and you can see the plug-in right down there. I'll see if I can move it for you. Right in the corner down there. That's where that plug-in is, and that's what we're trying to get at. Okay, so in order to do that, I also loosened off this monitor. Okay, and I may have to just loosen off this monitor uh, support as well in order to get to it. It's very tough, very tight to get at. But I gotta check and make sure that all the plug-in is connected all the way and make sure that the seal on that plug-in uh, is sealing from the elements, right? Water, moisture, and things like that. Uh, I've seen uh, corroded, corro uh, corroded connectors before and it's important to pull it apart and uh, pull the connector apart and have a look at the pins. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're looking for. Right here, I wanted to check these connectors, make sure that they're not uh, corroded. If you see green or, or scaly uh, white material buildup, but you can see they're nice and clean. Same as on the male ends of the connector. Okay, they look very good. And those are the ones for the wipers. Okay, so I know that those are okay. The reason I pulled all of this out and I looked at the uh, contacts on the connector on the pins is because this lever right here okay it's coming right down from the motor it comes up here and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't rubbing on the harness anywhere okay because the default code did indicate that there was a short okay so I need to make sure that the wiring harness is good in this area so I'm gonna make it work now okay so just watch that link Okay. 
we removed this so it doesn't flap us in our face while we're testing it. But I wanted to uh, make sure that there's absolutely no wires touching that lever as it's working. Okay, and uh, as you can, as you saw there in the video, uh, it, nothing was uh, in rubbing through or anything like that, and the connectors were in good condition. So that's what I needed to check back here. So I'm going to assemble all this to back together, and uh, we'll continue onwards. So as you can see, I got all the panels back on and uh, all the screws are in their place. I just wanted to go over uh, how I got it out and how I got it back in. This panel right here, okay, is held on by two screws and there's one at the bottom. You can probably see it under there. Okay. Had to get that one out. I also had to uh, loosen off this other one here. Okay. And then also... A couple of other ones in behind there somewhere. You should be able to see them down there. Okay, so everything's back in place. I'm going to test this again. Okay, and as you can see, the wiper's working. Intermittent, and also your first speed. Okay. And then, yeah. We had an error code, okay, on the monitor. Okay, I cleared all the codes. And uh, yeah, we should be good for now. Okay, so we got the wiper working. We didn't see anything wrong with it, with the connections and things like that. So now we're gonna go start troubleshooting the uh, blower motor for the heater. First thing we're gonna do, uh, of course, is start with the fuses. If that's fine, then uh, we'll go to the motor, blower motor, and see if there's power there. Uh, if there's power there, then uh, we're gonna have to figure out why it's not running, okay? So let's check the fuses. There's the fuse panel, okay, and there's the fuses, okay. You can see which fuse goes where, okay, and we're going to, you know, since we're here, we're going to check them all. If there's any that are burnt out, we'll see which one it is. And we should have 24 or 25, there we go, 2506. On both sides of the fuse okay you always want to make sure that you got power on both sides of the fuse not just one side okay like that and uh, i'm a little bit awkward here but normally you could just touch them and you'll see right away plus it's a little cold out here in the west coast so the meter runs a little slower okay the digital display these all seem to be have 25 volts coming to them. We're going to identify the heater heater uh, fuse and we're going to pull it out just to have a look at it. It's always a good idea to just have a good look at it and check the uh, spade connectors, especially if the system's open. So the uh, AC unit, which is number 11, where's number 11? It's a 20 amp and we're just going to pull it and have a look at it. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at it. Right there. We want to make sure that that little center uh, uh, electrode there, that little piece is uh, intact. Okay. And this one's showing good. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. And always look at the little spades, make sure they're okay as well. So we're going to pull off this whole rear, rear cover assembly, this one, the bottom one, because that's where our blower motor is. I think behind this panel, I think behind it, this panel here, there's uh, going to be more relays and we need to find the uh, relay for the heater control. Komatsu quality, man. Holy smokes. Tight. So 
so uh, we pulled this back cover off and you can see some of the relays here unfortunately it's not the relay that we need the one we're looking for is R20 okay and you see that this one here is that's R24 okay that one there is R18 R23 R08 R010 and R12 the one that I'm that I need for the uh, air conditioner uh, or the uh, heater motor is actually behind the ECM and behind this plate and I can feel it feel them right in the back there's a few, there's a whole row back there and uh, the problem is I can't get to it so the easiest thing I can do for troubleshooting is to remove this cover down here okay and get to the motor and see if we have power at the motor if we have power at the motor then I know that my relay is fine okay uh, and my motor has an issue okay but if there's no power at the motor then I'm gonna have to uh, pull all these plates and the ECM off and uh, get to that R20 relay this is what it's like to work in the cab of an excavator very tight a little bit uncomfortable but we have to get it fixed right we have to get it done we pulled out this cover here okay and we're going to start checking our motor okay Be like I mentioned before the relay is back here it's very difficult to get it so let's check our motor and see if we have power there okay and this this wire here this little harness is what feeds our motor so I'm gonna try and pull it off okay so once again of course we look at the pins they're fine and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check and see if we have power here okay so we put our voltmeter on we need to make sure our ignition is on and we need to put the fan on okay so I put the fan on high now I'm gonna check my voltage Okay, so normally black is our ground. Just to be safe, I'm going to check both of them for power. Okay, so I'm gonna ground it. There's my 25 volts. Check the other one for power. And no, it's not no power, so it's most likely my ground circuit, okay? Now guys, I'm not pushing these, my tester, uh, I'm not pushing my probes in because that would actually expand the uh, connector. And then it's gonna create more issues in there when my spade doesn't fit in there, right? Or it fits loosely. So when I uh, check both terminals, you can see my voltage is at 24.9 volts. Okay, so that's giving me battery voltage. So that's telling me that my motor does have power, but it is not turning, okay? So that's indicating that my uh, motor is faulty. We're not going to pull it out right now, okay, but uh, we're going to have to put it on order. Okay, so that's uh, good news in a way because that means we don't have to go chasing our relay. That means our relay is working. We can do a quick check on that as well. We'll hear for the clicking. Turn on our AC, our fan, and we turn our speed, fan speed to the maximum. Okay, just like that. And then we can turn it off and we'll hear our relay again. So you heard that click? That's telling me my relay is working. Uh, what I'm gonna do is provide uh, power directly to the motor, and I'm also gonna ground it, just to confirm and make sure that uh, the motor is uh, not functioning properly, okay? So I've already grounded, grounded the terminals, okay? You can see my alligator clip there, goes down to the to the ground side of the uh, connector and this white one is actually my power okay so you can see when I touch it to power okay nothing's happening my motor does not work it's confirming that uh, the motor is uh, not functioning so it could have an open or it could be just totally burnt out so we just confirm that the third item that we need to check is going to be our radio okay the radio is not working and we're gonna test and see if it works or not we got to pull this panel off first thing and get to the wires as well. We'll see why it's not working. So in order to remove this panel, there's a, another small cover back here that I had to remove. And under that uh, cover, there's two more screws. OK, 
Okay, two more bolts. And then on the inside, there's also a couple more that I need to remove. So I'll get working on that and uh, get that cover off. We have to remove this back cover first. Okay, and then two bolts here to get this cover off. Turns on, you can see there's power on there, but it really doesn't display anything. Okay, so it's telling me it's dead. I did get to the plug in as well, I disconnected it. Okay, I was able to look at the, all the connections and they look to be in good condition, they're nice and clean. So I think this radio is going to have to be replaced and it's going to be a special because it's not very deep, it's a very short radio, so it's going to have to. Uh, be exact right from the dealership okay so for the uh, wiper motor we cleared the fault code it could have just been some moisture or something in the connections but we're gonna monitor that and and make sure that it doesn't come back so we cleared it it's gone it's working the wiper blade needs to be replaced but we'll get that on order for the heater motor we tested the fuses, we checked the relay for the, for the clicking, we checked the voltage at the motor itself, and we do have power there. Our ground is there as well. So it's indicating that the motor needs to be replaced. For the radio, we checked for power. We, it does have power, but uh, the, the digital display is not reading. The little switches and controls also are not functioning properly. It's telling us that the radio has an internal issue, and uh, we're gonna put that on order as well. So to support the channel, like, comment, and subscribe.